In this video we're going to have a look at the keys method associated with a TK Inter label. Consider this computer program here. We're creating a label with this code and here you can see we're going to pack the label. If I wish to refer to this option, this named argument in code, I can do so as shown here. You use the name of the label which you can see is label 1. You then use square brackets and in quotes you put BD. This is how we can gain access to this value of 8 because if you remember from the previous two videos we talked about key value pairs. Let's have a look at a, another line of code, this one here, and if I wish to gain access to this I can do so with this code here and you can see it's label 1 which is the name of the label in the code as you can see here and in square brackets you can see we have font and the font appears in the quotes and that is the key as shown here in the code. Note in the code it doesn't have quote RAM but it does here. So if I wish now to get at any of these options you use the name of the label and you use square brackets and you use the name of the key inside the square brackets. Therefore consider this program statement and you can see that I'm using label 1 then I have the square brackets in which I have font in quotes. Now that is gaining access to the key value pair whose key is font and to the key value pair I'm assigning this. So in other words the font will now be times 14 bold when this program statement executes. If we look at the code you could see it was times 22 bold but if I was to run this it would actually change it to times 14 bold, a smaller size font. Let's consider this program statement and here you can see we're dealing with label 1. We have the square brackets within which we can see we have font in quotes. Now what this is doing, it's gaining access to the key value pair whose key is font and it's going to grab the value that's in there and it's going to assign that value to this variable here, this variable I've just decided to call temp for temporary. Now we are doing something different here to what we've just seen on this line. On this line we were setting this to this value. On this line we're going to get what's in the value associated with this key and we're going to assign that to temp. For the program we've been discussing to date in this video, let's now turn our attention to this program statement. And you can see that we're going to be printing, and what we're going to be printing is this. And we can see we're dealing with label 1, then we have a dot, and then we have keys. Now the keys is a method, and what we're doing here, we're sending a message to the instance of the label whose name is label 1. So this is dot notation that indicates that a message is being sent to this object and that the method to be invoked in that object is this one here, the keys method. And what will happen is the keys method will go and get all the keys associated with the instance of the label, what is called label 1 in this program. And we can see the runtime appearing here. Now let's consider the runtime and let's look at things we should identify from the program above. Here you can see we have BD, that's one of the keys and you can see that that is the case because on this line you can see BD is assigned 8. Here you can see we have BG and of course that's shown here as BG is being assigned red. If you look at FG you can see that appears here in the code where FG is assigned white. And here, for example, we have text and you can see that appears here where text is assigned hello world. Now there are many more things listed here. Let's have a look at this one, pad X and pad Y. Now we've seen those in a previous video. They put space around the text within a label. We've seen the font before and we've seen the font in this program as you can see here we're making it times 22 bold so what this is showing us are all the keys we can expect to see when we're dealing with a label and we can see there's quite a few keys and it doesn't mean we have to use them all every time we wish to have a label in our graphical user interface but you can see that they are all there and associated with each key you see here will be a value because we have numerous key value pairs here 
I've amended the program we've considered so far in this video by putting in a for loop as you can see here. Now what this for is going to do, it's going to go to each of the keys in turn and this is the message that's going to return all of the keys that are in label one and we're going to pick off each item in turn, we're going to print that item, then we're going to print the colon and then this is going to get at the value associated with that item. So of course this is going to display the key and this is going to display the value. When the program executes, we're going to see the following output. And I'm only showing half of the output here. I'll show the other half in a moment. Now what we can see, if I choose something that we are quite clear on, i.e. this one here, you can see it's output BD and 8. Now it's output the BD from this item here, then it's output this colon to there, and then this goes and gets the value associated with BD, which is the 8, and it puts that there. So we can see that this has come from the fact that we set it up here when we created the instance of the label. Of course we go around this for loop a number of times and on one occasion through what this line will do it'll print out this here and if you look at what you're seeing you're seeing font and times 22 bold and of course that was set up here when we created the instance of the label. Of course I can highlight others we've used when we're setting up the instance of label 1 but let's have a look at this one here height and you can see that's set to zero so height is the key and the zero is the value now that was not part of this when I created the instance of the label but what this is telling me is that the default value for height is zero so that kind of suggests that when you run the application the height of the label is going to be zero in other words not there no that doesn't happen it overrides it when it's set to a zero but you will have known from a previous video that you can set the height and that dictates how many lines of text output to a label will appear appropriately displayed the other half of the output from this program is shown here and if we just scan down I'm going to choose this one here pad x and you can see the value of that is 1 whereas if you look here you can see I haven't used pad x so this is telling me the default value for pad x is 1 likewise if we look at pad y the default value for that is 1 and you will know from previous videos in this playlist that you can set in this area pad x to be various values to give you more space around the text that's displayed within the label and if you look at some others if you look here for example a text variable you can see there's nothing associated with that there's a gap here now a text variable is not being used here as you can see but this is something that is very useful and it's something that I'll be looking at in a video so what can we say about this method here? Well, I've used it in this video to give you a feel for what's under the bonnet of Python. But of course, it's also very useful, I find, when I want to find out, well, what are the named arguments that I can use when I want to create an instance of a label or an instance of a button or whatever the widget is I wish to deal with. Of course, I can look at the documentation, but I often find it just as easy to simply get it to list the keys for me. So it will remind me what kind of things I can do with the label what kind of things I can do with the button but here in this video I've used it to show the nature of the key value pairs and how we can change and gain access to the values associated with the keys for an example in this case of a label but we can do this with other widgets that we decide to place on a window check out the supporting website for these videos in addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?